Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Michael Kittle Rare Coins. We haven't done our regular stream in a while. I mean, I know a lot of you join us for our monthly coin club meetings, and you guys tune in for our monthly free coin giveaways, which are always, always going on. But, uh, I haven't streamed in a while. I need to do this more often. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. No, okay, we're not done yet. Nubs came in. Ben Box Breaks, good to see you. Kyle, what's up, Kyle? Uh, Kyle wanted to know if we could show off the tone one from last time. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, clever coin name, Tim Iceman. Vincent, how you doing? Big Mill Hunt Silver wants to know if there's any CCs available. Uh, this is not going to be a sale. Well, maybe we'll sell a few things. We don't know. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, no CCs available today. No, no Carson Cities. Uh, Alfred likes the Minecraft music. Let me know if it's too loud. Again, I got a new computer since I was streaming a bunch and had to redo everything. <laughs> uh, if it's too loud, I can adjust that. Thank you. Um, clever. Uh, watch out for the blackout car. Oh, you gotta watch out, Bill. Yep. I'm streaming from a secure location, as always. Short and sweet. Yep, clever. <laughs> Angie, how you doing? Um, all right. So what this is all about today is we're going through some coins. And I did a stream back in August. No, 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 not August 2023. August 2022. August 2022, where I was showing off and going through a horde of Panamanian silver coins that I acquired. We were starting to sort them out, go through them, and spent a few hours doing so. Well, probably about two hours or so. And uh, never got through it all, so I planned on doing another stream or a video right after that, but for one reason or another, I boxed them up and put them on the shelf, and they became sort of forgotten. Well, not totally forgotten, just, uh, I don't know, they've been sitting there for like 18 months or something like that, so. Anyway, it's a lot of coins, I gotta do something with them eventually, and I don't even remember what we looked at or how many of each I had or what we even had, so... I know I need to sit here and try to figure this out, and I figure, well, maybe some of you would like to join me and hang out, because I haven't streamed in a while, so. Again, what it is, they are a, a horde of one-tenth and one-quarter Panama Balboas from the 1960s, and I acquired them basically in bags like this. That supposedly has 400 one-tenth Balboa coins in it. I don't know. What does it? Maybe we'll see. Clever has been a member for 34 months. A trip in the memory mobile. Well, there's another bag. Supposedly has 400 one-tenth Balboas in it. Anyway, I bought a box full of this stuff, and we started going through it. And after the stream, I mean, I got this little baggie with a note on it saying there's 11 1962, and those are all quarter Balboa. Okay. Is that what's really in there still? I have no idea. Uh... Like this one, for example, this one had 44, 1962, one-tenths in it, but now there's only four in here. I know what happened to the other 40, though, so we can talk about that in a second, too. Um, yeah, so I don't know what I got, so I gotta take some kind of an inventory of these so I can, before I even start thinking of selling them to people. It has 50, 1962, one-tenth Balboa, supposedly. They have a very nice... You remember that from way back when, Ogier Coins? Well, thank you for that. T, it's putting you to sleep. Play some... Nah, I mean, I got some, uh... I got some crazy music we could play, but... Let me think about... Let me look at this. YouTube's giving me lots of warnings about my bitrate. Is that something I can even change during the stream? And if it is something I can change during the stream... No, I can't change it during the stream. Okay. Um, hopefully the quality of the stream doesn't totally suck. Because it says my... Current stream bitrate is lower than they recommend, and I look at what I have the settings at, and it's way lower than it should be. Probably from the last time I tried messing with it and streaming, and I know I was having troubles with my internet connection at one point. Uh, hopefully the quality isn't too bad. Anyway. It says I just have a good connection. I don't have an excellent connection because of it. Anyway, we're just going to keep going with it, I guess, because I can't change it right now, it says. I guess you can't change it midstream. 
Cool. That's helpful. Ashley, how you doing? All right, so you guys might be wondering what the heck these coins even are, right? What are these things? Let's take a look. 1961 Panama Balboa. Quarter Balboa we're looking at first. We can show them as well. On the... Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Let's go here and show... Is this going to work? Share screen? It does. So here's a Panama one quarter Balboa. So what these are, they're 90% silver, six and, a half, six and a quarter grams, 0 0.1808 ounces of actual silver weight, exactly the same as a U.S. silver quarter. Exactly the same. Little on the low. Yeah, T, you know what? I had a... my Oh, thanks, Gringo. Two ninety nine dollars Super Chat with the Hippo Jack. Nice. Thank you. Um... I had a slower internet connection, so I had to lower it a bit, right? I got a better one since, and I didn't adjust the settings. I didn't look at that setting. Hopefully it's okay. The quality, yeah, it might be a bad camera. I know the camera, or it might be, maybe I just need to clean the lens. I don't know. I know it's a bad camera. Well, it's still 1080p, but it's about the cheapest USB camera I can get, or I, that I got years ago. I should upgrade it. You're right. Gringo, Gringo, can you send me the link to that one you got? Maybe I should get another one. The one for the coin club. All right. Anyway, this is it's a, it, these are the exact same uh, size as a U.S. quarter, ninety percent silver, same weight, same everything. The U.S. mint did strike lots of these previous to the nineteen sixties. Um, this one here, the nineteen sixty one, has a mintage of two million. These were all minted in Mexico City, the nineteen sixty ones. Mexico City, and you can look at the catalog values. They say they're worth more than the silver melt value of four dollars and fifty three cents. It. $25 or so silver. Um, they say even mint state ones are 25 to 35 bucks. I don't think they're worth that much, but they're definitely worth way more than the silver melt value, especially in BU condition. Especially in BU condition, which is hopefully what we have for all these coins. If we look at the 1962, which is a separate type, I know we, I think what we have is mostly 1961s and 1962s. I mean, we're going to see as we go through them, I believe. Uh, let's show this one. Here's the 1962, mintage of 4 million. And again, the catalog values in mid state 15 to 25. That's for 63s. I think a lot of them that we have are more, like born to 64, 65 range. The 1962s were minted in London by the British Royal Mint. <laughs> the Numista. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no Numista. Well,. We can show Numista real quick just to show you um, some information that they do have. So again, these were minted in London. Again, same 90% silver. says right on the coin, L-E-Y, silver, 90 grams, 6.25. Very, very good. Uh, let me bring up Numista if I can figure that out quickly. How do I look Numista up? Oh, I mean, let's just type Numista into the search bar. Maybe. Will that bring it up? Uh, it does. So if I bring up Numista, it'll show us something fun here that the other site, NGC Coin, doesn't have. So here's the page for Numista on the quarter Balboa. It puts it all on one page. Um, down here under the dates, it actually tells you who minted them each year. So in the earlier years, the Philadelphia and San Francisco Mint made the coins for Panama. 1962, the British Royal Mint made them. They have a separate page for the 1961s that'll show you the Mexican Mint made it in Mexico City, but uh, slightly different lettering on the coins in 61 makes it a separate type, according to uh, according to the books. And the one tenth Balboa is pretty much the same design. They all got low mintages and they're all pretty sweet. All righty, I guess we should start looking at some coins, eh? Start looking at some coins and figure out what we have here. Um, yeah, some of them have frosty proof, like, like here, let's just look at this little bag of what supposedly has 11 of the quarters in it and just take one out at random and see what we're dealing with. Let's take that one, for example. This is what the design looks like up close and in person. Nice, shiny, pretty coin. Move my light around a little bit. Yeah, very flashy. Very, uh, 
attractive coins, and even the reverses looks look pretty darn good. This is the 1962 example. Very shiny. Very shiny, pretty. Um, Kyle earlier was mentioning that during the last stream that we did way back in August 2022, we did find a really nice toned example. And during that stream, I said I would send it in for grading. And I did. I did send it in for grading. I sent two of the coins in for grading. One of the quarters and uh, one of the tenth bellows. That one looks a little different. Yeah, maybe it's got a little bit of light toning to it. Not too crazy. Um, but I can't show them to you right now because like these that I just set on the shelf for the last, I don't know, 18 months or so, what am I using for the moving light? Just moving a lamp by hand. I got a lamp on a swing arm and I just moved it by hand. I got this, uh, I sent them in for grading, but just like the box of Balboa's here, um, I got a box from Anax still sealed up from about, I don't know, 12 months plus ago, a year, over a year ago that I didn't open up and, I mean, I hope my coins are in there. I was planning on doing an unboxing video and, you know, just, uh, haven't done it yet. <laughs> so I uh, haven't done the un unboxing video yet, but I'm prepared to show you because I knew Kyle would ask. Here we go. This is what it looks like from my last stream. Here we can show that. That's the tone one. Can I hit play here and maybe I move it around a little bit? There we go. That was the reverse. It's a 1961 quarter bell bow with a beautiful toning on it. So that one went off to Anax for grading. And uh, here, let's uh, pause that and see if I can show the other one. I think the the tenth bell bow was in here that I sent. It wasn't as nice, but it was about the best one I saw. It's right here. Well, and then we get a commercial. Organize your life, it says. Uh, skip that, okay. Yeah, this is one of the one tenths. I think we sent that one in for grading it as well. I think it was the best one we saw during the stream. So, yeah, I hope they sent back the right ones, Alfred. So, those are pretty nice coins. So, hopefully we find something. Hopefully we find some more uh, nice coins like that. Or another tone one, because I mean, I haven't even opened these yet, so don't even know what's in here. Hopefully the, hopefully Anax sent me back those two coins correctly. And also, I'm still hoping that when I bought these coins back in 2022, the person I bought them from actually sent me the right amount of coins and didn't send me just a bunch of modern dimes in here or something instead. I don't think they did, because everything else has been great so far, but probably should have checked. Probably should have checked. It's party time. Party pickles here. All right. You know what? We'll just uh, we'll get that out of there for now. Put those back since that has a count on the bag. And just figure out how we're going to go through this here. All right. The other thing is, is this says it has 44 1962s in it from the live stream. And there's only four in here. So what happened to the other 40? What happened to the other 40? Well, I was thinking about it. I was wondering what happened to the other 40. And then I remembered. I sent 40 of those, the 1962 one tenth, which are the same as the silver dime. Same silver. I sent those in the Anax as well. And I also sent 40 of the quarter Belboas into Anax. Why would I do that? Because I got this. 1962. One tenth Balboa. Michael Kittle Rare Coins. Coin Quistador. Pretty sweet, huh? And it's a Anax sample slab, not for resale. And I got some of the 1962 quarter Balboa is done like that as well. Beautiful coins. And these came out really nice. Except they screwed up. Anybody know what they screwed up on these? Anax messed them up. But I only pay a few bucks a piece to get them graded like this in the sample slabs. No, I got 40 of each, screen. <laughs> yep, I got 40. Well, I mean, you're going to you're gonna take one of each? Okay, then I got 39 of each. Anybody know what they messed up on these? Anyone? Anyone? 
Bueller. Bueller. Well, what they did on these, since nobody... Well, I didn't know there was some delay. Now, the spelling's fine. Right up here, they call it a one-tenth ounce Balboa. It's not one-tenth of an ounce. It's the same as a silver dime. It's .0723 ounces. It's a one-tenth Balboa is the denomination. It's actually called the undecimo. One-tenth of Balboa. So they call it one-tenth ounce, which is not correct. And on the quarter, they called it, of course, one-quarter ounce Balboa, when it's really .1818 of an ounce of actual silver weight. So, yeah, we got some error labels, and you can see here on the coin again, it says on there all the information. But these are un corto de Balboa. Yeah. So they're errors, but they're still cool. It wasn't worth sending them back in. I did open this box when it came because it was a giant box and I couldn't remember what was in it when I got it. And it's like, oh, those came out pretty cool. Coinquistador. Yeah, they spelled Conquistador wrong, but we told them to do that on purpose. So I got 40 sets of those, which hope to make available at some point to the... The, to, the, to the channel uh, subscribers, I guess. I was going to say channel members, but not uh, channel subscribers. Well, that's what I told them, T. Um, when I send them in, you can, by default, they'll give you what you say are the ugly yellow labels. Um, which I've gotten stuff graded and sample slabs made by them in the past with the yellow labels. But I asked them on these, do something different. And this is what they gave me. I wasn't, I, I, I mean, I guess if I spent more time with them and talked to the right people, I could have like probably had them give me options exactly, exactly what to do. But I just told them to do something different. And this is what they gave me. But I said I definitely wanted to say sample, not for resale on the other side. And they did. What's it cost to get these done? Well, since they're not grading the coin, they're just looking at the date and they didn't even do, you know. 100% perfect job because they called it a one tenth ounce. Um, they're not actually grading it. They're just encapsulating it. And I guess they're certifying that it's genuine. Um, it's a lot cheaper than a normal grading fee. I think because I had 80 coins done at once, I might have... It was under $10 a coin. Need to do a dual sample slab with the... Well, with what commemorative? What, what does that mean? Um, nah, I mean, nobody does dual sample slabs right now. And... I mean, you might be able to get PCGS to grade them in a dual slab, but they're not going to, they're not going to, what do you call it? They're not going to, uh, can't even talk. They're not going to do a dual sample slab for just, you know, I don't know. You'd have to talk to the right people. Alrighty. Uh, will they catch you if you put, yeah, you can't do anything like that. Uh, see, I've, I've tried to have them stuff like, uh. Like, you can't write, like, finest known on there. You can't, like, write anything that, like, is a grade or insinuates a grade, you know? You can't do that. And I tried to get them to do... They won't do political things either. Well, not really. They maybe tried that at one point. They won't do... Uh, there's a few things they won't do, okay? There's a few things they won't do. Oh, Balboa Park, the commemorative. Yeah, from San Diego. Well... That has nothing to do with the Panama silver coins we're dealing with now. It has nothing to do with Panama. I mean, it's a San Diego commemorative from uh, the 1930s. Don, Alaska in the house. Member for 41 months. Let's go, Don. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's just, let's just start getting into this, right? Let's see what's in here. Uh, first time opening these in, uh, since I bought them. Okay. Let's get this one over to the side for now. All right. We got some rolls here. So this said 401 tenths. So we should have eight rolls of $5 each. Well, 50 coins each, not really dollars. But I might say dollars interchangeably like they're U.S. coins. All right, that's empty. Toss that. And there it is, eight rolls. And we can just look at the end. There, uh... They look like they're BU on the end coins, so 
we'll get into them and we'll count them and uh, see what dates they are. Again, most of the coins I've been seeing were 1962s, some 1961s as well. So there's eight rolls of those. Let's just go ahead and get this one open too. Don, you back in Alaska already? There's one, two. Five, six, seven, and should be one more, and there is eight. Okay, cool. And let's just grab one and take a peek, and oh yeah. Yeah, these look like they were fresh off the presses pretty much. Like, they weren't always stored in these tubes. They were probably issued in a bag or something at some point, and then somebody at one point later put them in the rolls. How much just to end the stream now? Like, what do you mean, to end the stream now? Well, Don, um, I guess there's a couple questions involved. You want all the coins? Do I get to keep the sample slab ones, or do you want all the sample slab ones, too? Because if I can keep the 40 of each and the sample slabs, and you just want all the rest of them, um, i got to figure out how many I have. I think there were... Actually, let me look here. I, I, I got a note here I wrote down. I think I what I what I'm supposed to have is about about a little over two thousand coins total. I think it was around sixteen, seventeen hundred of the tenths, and about four or five hundred of the quarters. And I don't have the exact number because I don't remember, and it's just uh, I was going kind of by the. I was trying to look at the emails I did with the person I bought it from, but it's going to be just over 2,000 coins total. And uh, But yeah, just to end them now, uh, it'd be a lot, Don. So, all right. <laughs> just messing? Okay. Then we'll keep going. All right, what else do we got here? Do I got any more? Those are empty. Let's see what else we got back here. Oh, here's another. Here's uh, 350. One tenth Balboas. Okay. So what is that? Seven rolls in this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. And just look at the end. Uh, looks to be BU. Yep, they all do. Sweet. Um, just mess yeah, these are pretty sweet, Tim. I'm not mad at these at all. What do we got here? What is this thing? Ah, oh, well, here's another bag that says 300. So it should have six rolls in here. Let's see. Yeah, these are a lot of... I, I, these are a lot of the... Uh, one tenths. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six, and nothing else in there. Okay, that's correct. I'm putting them under my microscope thing, but let's just grab one of those and shiny pretty. Yeah, I'm not mad at these, but anyway, I figured I gotta go through these at some point. They've been on the shelf again for way too long, and when am I ever going to get to these? I don't know, but I figure if I get on stream right now, we can get through them and take a look together. And uh, that's what we're doing. Um, I got an open bag here. It looks like we might have dug into it last time. It says Quarter Balboa. So let's see what's in here still. Looks like one roll there, one roll there, and one roll there. Looks like we got a hundred twenty quarters right there, and sweet. And we'll have to look through and see what dates everything are and figure it out. Uh, okay. But yeah, if you guys have any questions about any of the other stuff we got going on, figure we'll just hang out. I'm here anyway, and we can do it live.
You might want to check these out too. Check that out. It's a 1971 S Silver Ike. Got a 1922 Silver Peace Dollar. And we got, what is this? An 1882? Oh, is that an over S? I didn't even check, did I? 1882 O Morgan Silver Dollar. If anybody wants these, they're part of the monthly free coin giveaway. I don't think it's an over S. Let's just double check, right? Eh, it's kind of worn down. I don't think it is. Yeah, if anybody wants a chance for these, these are the monthly free coin giveaway for March. There's still a few days left, or, well, two days left to get in, I guess. So make sure to do that if you haven't done so already. And do I have a link that for that? I don't know. Maybe it's a good link. Maybe it's last month's. Maybe it's an old one. But you guys can figure that out. All right. Make sure to get in on that. All right, let's keep going through this box of coins. Um, I'm going to fill up this desk. I already filled up my desk here. Okay, let's just see what I bagged up. There's 50 of the 1962s. There's another 50. There's 40 1962 of the quarters. Oh, man. Oh, this is going to be a mess. There's another 50 of the 1962 dimes and another 50 of them right there. There's 40 more of the quarters. Make sure to get in on that giveaway. Oh, it, yeah, we might have updated it for the last coin club meeting. You might have told me to do that. Here's another 40 of the quarters. Here's one quarter in a flip by itself. Why would I have done that? Well, let's take a look at it. Oh, because it's got a little bit of toning to it. A little more dirty toning, if anything. I don't know. I guess I just pull, put that one to the side for whatever reason. Not really that nice. But we decided to pull it aside at that time. The last stream. Uh, that was an empty tube. We got some garbage in the box here. What's in the box? Here's 14 1961 quarters. Okay. There's 50 more of the 62s. There's 40 of the 1961 quarters. Bunch of empty tubes again. What else have we got here? Um, looks like you went through most of the quarters. There's 40 of the 1962s. There's 40 more. Uh, there's another 40. And that might be it. That might be all I got. I'm looking through the bag here and it looks like mostly empty tubes and packing material it doesn't feel too heavy anymore all right no swiss chalet um for alfred <laughs> chicken nuggets with sweet and sour sauce from harvey's i don't know harvey's 1961 is an excellent year yes it is isn't it it's a uh, strobo grammatic i always thought that was fun b3 same upside down as right side up, right? Let's take a look at one of them under the scope here. Here's one of the, we got this little baggies of 14 of the 1961 quarters. Let's just pull one out at random. Throw that under the scope and take a peek. So these were minted in Mexico City, the 1961s. So you see the date, 1961. If we flip it over, 1961. Same both directions. Strobo Grammatic. This one's got like a struck strike through or something in it, doesn't it? Look at that. Is that a struck through a wire? Maybe Shan if Shannon was here or somebody from the live coin QA, maybe they would know this. Okay. 
to focus a little better. Something going on there. Interesting. I don't know. Pretty sure that's not part of the design. I guess I can grab another one just to prove that, right? Well, that one has it too. Maybe that is part of the design. Or maybe they just all have that. I don't know. Is that part of the design? Could be. Seems like a strong line to be part of the design right there, doesn't it? I don't know. Maybe I gotta look at a bunch of them. But I guess that wouldn't tell me anything if they were all from the same die, right? Yeah, that one has it too. Okay, maybe it's not a strike through. I don't know. Well, it's definitely not a strike through because you wouldn't have the same strike through on multiple coins like that. Could be something with the die, or it could just be the design, and I didn't really know it. There's the obverse of the Mexico City version. Nice die polish on this one. I'll move my light around, it makes it easier. Cool. It's on both sides, so I'm just seeing things. It is, you're right. Okay. It was the lighting that, like, from this angle, B3, I can't see it at all. Nah, it's just me wanting to see things, isn't it? Yeah, there it is. It just folds in the, I guess that's flags or drapery or whatever it is. Yeah, just me wanting to see things. Now, I've already kind of thought about it, Gringo. I, I just want to make sure the count of what I have before I start selling any of this stuff. Um, and I know, like, I got some 1961s, but all for the dime so far, it looks like all we have are 1962s. If I get through these and find 1961s as well, which I think there are, at least I thought there was going to be when I bought these, um, I can then do like a four coin set, you know, like the 61 and 62 tenths and the 61 and 62 quarters. But I can't offer that right now without knowing that I have enough of each date, I guess. Because right now, looking at the quarters, it looks like I just have these for the 61s, so I could order offer both of the quarters but i don't didn't find any of the 62 one tenths yet and i don't know maybe all these are 62s or 61s the rest of the quarter so i can't offer but i can offer hey you just want one random tenth and one random quarter sure i could throw out a number for that or if you want a roll of the dimes and get you a number or 10 of each 10 quarters 10 dimes or if you want to buy uh buy these cool things you know the samples i mean i figured that out kind of what i where i need to be on a lot of stuff but anyway we'll get to that what my plan is is after i get through these get a count of everything that i got and sort them out like by date and if you buy like 50 of the dimes for example i'll put them in a coin tube i'm not going to just ship them to you in a bag where they're all getting banged up i'm trying not to move them around too much because i know I'm putting little marks and dings on them every time I touch them, but they're not. I look through most of them. There might there might be some high grades here, like 66s even. I think most are MS64, 65 quality. Maybe some 63s. They're in that. They're 63 to 65s. That's my guess. And I guess I guess we'll see when I open up the the Anex, uh, the box from Anex that's been sitting on my shelf, and see how some of those graded out. All right, so let me just get a rough count of what I got and make sure I even have what we have here. Or maybe we have what I think we have. All right, let me do this. and Let me bring up a spreadsheet document here just so I can try to keep track. All right, so we got... I'm just going to assume all the tenths here. All these rolls are 1962s for now until... Eh, it's probably a bad idea. Let's see how many we got here. All right, there's four, eight, and there's 
16. There's 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 29 that are still rolled up. Let's see, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, and 29 rolls. And that is 29 times 50 in a roll. It should be. Holy crap. 1,450 coins. That's a lot. Okay. Wow. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Let me put that down. Make sure. Let me put in the 40 of each. I got slabbed, just so I remember those. Tap that like button. Yeah. Just mentioned sets. Have we ever heard about... Yeah, Alfred. They told me they were going to see if they could do that, and then they just shipped me... Uh, a couple of the other things I had ordered, but they didn't ship me that roll set, so I guess we're not getting that. Which was a total bummer. What Alfred's talking about is I ordered a set of each roll from the Canadian Mint of the new Charles III design. The nickel, the dime, the quarter, and so on. It was a special box that had one roll of each of the new coins. And I ordered it right before Christmas time. And it was going to ship after Christmas, like in February-ish or something, I think, maybe. Maybe even March. And then I kind of forgot about it. And apparently, in between the time I ordered and in the time they were going to ship, my credit card expired. Most places, they automatically get the date somehow. Fine, okay, I don't know how they do that. But th apparently the Canadian Mint doesn't. And supposedly they had sent me emails asking me to update my... Or call them, to because they don't just have a thing... Call them to update it, and I didn't get that, and... Or I didn't see it until they sent me, like, a another notice while I was in Hawaii visiting the family. So about a week or so later, I actually called them and said, hey, here's my new info. And they're like, oh, sorry, they're, uh, they're already sold out. I'm like, well, that's great that they sold out and all, but you've got my set that I ordered, right? Because all you need is my credit card. New expiration date. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 you, you waited too long to call. I'm like, really? There's no deadline you gave me. Anyway, they said they were going to look and try to get them for me and... They didn't. So, I guess I don't get the new Charles III coins for my coin club. Or for you, the viewers. Sorry. Sorry. Next meeting of the Glendale Coin Club is going to be here, April 12th. That's even updated? Wow. That's pretty crazy, huh? That's even updated? Wow. I'm sure I got some other commands popping up that might be wrong, but... I didn't, oh yeah, all proceeds of this forwarded to Glendale Coin Club? No, they're not going to be. Yeah, I got that set up as if this is a Glendale Coin Club stream, don't I? I can fix that, though. I'll stop that from happening anymore. Let me open up my night bot and get this taken care of. Sorry about that. Let me log in with night bot. Of course, they got a whole new look to this, which is... You want access to my account? Sure. Go into my thing there and disable that from popping up. All right, we should be good. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Okay. 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 Yeah, I'm not getting it. Yep, that's pretty much what they said. Sorry, buddy. I'm like, I'm not your buddy, friends. And they're like, you're not my friend, guy. Uh, I'm not your guy, pal. All right, where were we? Where were we? All right, I'm trying to count these. So we got 29 rolls there. I got three rolls of the quarter right now. So that's 120 coins. Okay. Okay. All right. Looking good, looking good. I'm gonna highlight those on my. I'm, I got a little spreadsheet I opened up here. I'm just highlighting those a different color so I don't. So I know that I didn't really verify the dates there. Okay, we got 11, 1962 quarters here. Uh, mark that down. I got four. I should cross that out because that's wrong. That used to be 44, but now it's. I can count, though. That's a big marker. Four. With the 1962s. The tenths. 
14 1961 quarters. Another 40 of the 1961 quarters. Heart SP. I don't know what that is. Oh, South Park. <laughs> Not your friend, guy. <laughs> I don't heart the new South Park game, I'll tell you that. Alright, 40 of the 1962 quarters. There's another 40 of the 1962 quarters. And here's another 40 of those. And another 40. And another 40. And then there's one just sitting here. The toned, well, lightly toned one. Let me just add that in there. And I think that's all the four. Nope, there's another roll of uh, 40 more right there. Okay. So how many is that for the quarters right now? That is 466 quarters. Okay. And I know I gave some away as well last time we did a stream. We gave a few away at least. 466 of them. Jeez. SP South Park. I figured it out. I figured it out. Alright, now the dime. We got 1450 plus 50 of these. And then there's another 50. Another 50. Another 50. Another 50. All right, how many bags is that? One, two, three, four, five. So there's 250 coins right there. All right, how many is that total? That is 1,744 of them. Is that what I'm supposed to have on all these coins? Let's see. I don't know. <laughs> Seems like an odd number. I know we gave a few away. I don't remember how many I gave away. I didn't really keep track too well, but I think that's what we got. I think that's what we got. Math is hard. I probably should have kept track of uh, the exact number I was supposed to have here, but that's okay. I think it's close. I know it was supposed to be over 2,000 coins total, just over, and we got 2,210 here right now. So... I think it checks out, right? Maybe. I mean, I got the two in that I sent in for grading as well. That counts, right? I guess I could add those to the list. <laughs> so that makes it 2,212 coins. I think it's close. I'm not mad. I think the guy sent me everything we were supposed to have. Probably should have checked it when I got the package a year and a half ago. Would have been better. All right, so now I'm going to go through those rolls of the quarters, I think, first. So there's only three of those. And see what dates we actually have. Let's see what we actually have in here. All right, let's just uh, start with the first one here. Some of that fuzz and stuff off my mat here. Ooh, that one's shiny on the end. Let me uh, just tear this open. I'm not saving these rolls. <laughs> shiny, pretty silver, eh? Let's just pull one out of the middle of the roll and see what we got. They're nice looking coins. And these are 1962. At least this one is. We'll look through them all. Actually, I see another one right here on the end of the roll that is a 1961. It's got a little bit of toning from the end of the roll, too. Nothing great, but it's there. And just to show the difference, 
Here's a 1962. And here's the 1961 right on top of it. You can see a big difference in the lettering between the Mexican Mint, which did the 1961s, and then the London Mint, which did the 62s. Big difference. And then the same on the reverse. You got differences in the numbers and the lettering. Cool. Just a little hint of toning on the one, right? Not mad at it. All right, let's start sorting these out. There's a 61 and a 62. 62. Looks like it's a mix of both. Love that sound of silver, huh? I do. I mean, I really don't even have to look at the... I'm still looking at the date just in case there's another year here. But it looks like everything I saw so far has been 61s and 62s. So I'm not expecting any other dates. Trying to just touch the coins by the edges only. And I do not recommend hunting coins with gloves. I see so many people, a bunch of these YouTubers, especially the guys going through coins selling stuff or selling roll hunts and everything. A lot of them are using gloves. Recommend, highly recommend against that. You're like, why, kid? Oh, why? You'll keep the coins nice and... Won't get fingerprints on them. Well, I'm not going to get fingerprints on them if you grab them by the edge. And here in my fingers, I'm not going to drop the coin. Much less likely to drop the coin. Now, if you're just searching dirty half dollars from the bank, it don't matter if you drop them at all either. But if you're searching nice coins, you don't want to be dropping them. If you use a glove, you're not touching the coin. You don't have as good of a grip. And uh, you will drop more coins with gloves. There are still hats. Yeah, I think so. Aren't there? Or search other coins? I'm sure there are. I see a bunch of like the ticky tacky style uh, YouTube shorts of people opening up rolls and stuff. Yeah, oh, another 1961. Okay. Mostly 62s in this roll. You send your million dollar coin in the PCGS for professional grading. They don't wear gloves on any of the coins. So. Just get used to holding coins by the edge and you'll be good. So we're all doing the vertical format streams. Is that what I should have done? Ah. All right. In that roll, we have three 1961s. And let's just make sure we had a roll. There's seven coins. There's ten. Make sure we had the right amount. We'll put them in stacks of ten here. There's eight more. Nine, ten. Sure we had 40 in the roll, right? Yep, sure did. 37 62s and 3 61s in that roll. Okay. You don't like the vertical format either? Yeah. If you roll hunt from banks, though, the coins are dirty. So? So? See, when I grew up back in the 1900s, way back in the 1900s, what we did for fun is go outside and dig holes in the dirt. And you know what? I didn't wear gloves then. And I actually got a lot of dirt on my hands, you know? And it was okay because you know what you do when you're done? You wipe your hands on your clothes and then you get your butt beat by mom. And then you go inside and you wash your hands, right? You wash your hands and it's all okay. It's all okay. And uh, if you get a little dirt under the fingernails, that's fine too, you know? Do I see a toned one in here? Lightly toned, at least. But yeah, I'm more, I mean, I would rather, and yeah, you know what? When I go through, I've done the, I've done the bag breaks here before, where I've gone through a whole bag of nickels, $200 face value of nickels or more. I think I did two bags one time where it was $400 and then, or go through 
boxes of the 5,000 Lincoln cents, or, or actually it's a box of 2,500, but I've gone through multiple boxes, or bags of wheat cents, 5,000 coins, and it's like, yeah, my hands get really, really dirty. But you know what, if I'm searching for hours and wearing gloves, my hands are going to be getting sweaty in the gloves or whatever. I don't, I'd rather not be wearing the gloves, A. And also, you don't get a good grip on the coin. And if you find something valuable, which you're probably not going to start hunting rolls anyway. Um, I don't know. I've just always not worn gloves or anything hunting coins and probably not going to be convinced to start anytime soon. Now, for most of these, I'm only really looking at one side real quick just to figure out which date they are. Um, could the other side be wildly toned? It's possible, but unlikely that it's just going to be a one-sider. But maybe. So will some of these that I ship out to people be something cool and that I missed? Maybe. It's possible. Would I notice it when I'm packing it up? Probably. So don't expect anything wild. If anybody wants any of these, this one just looks nice. This looks like a nice high grade example. Especially nice. I mean, they're all nice, but that one doesn't have hardly any marks on it. And that's another 1962. So far, all these have been 62s, but I see at least 161 in the pile here, so. Hopefully you guys can hear that stacking of the silver picking up on the camera. Because I like it. I like it a lot. Um, let's see. Wearing gloves and looking like a pro and not showing your messed up nails. Well, maybe. Maybe. I get that. Well, and you know what? And kind of as a joke, I don't know if anybody thinks it's a joke because I get a lot of stupid comments on my videos. T, if you look at my channel, I've done hundreds of videos showing coins and slabs, right? Hundreds. And kind of as a joke, because I always say you don't wear the gloves and gloves are, you know, whatever. I wear white cotton gloves in those videos holding the slabs, you know, because I don't know. I, I think it's funny and apparently most people don't get it and they're like, why are you wearing gloves? You know the coin's in a slab, right? It's like, come on, guys. Well, and really, I'd rather you look at the coin and not my hands and fingernails and all that stuff. Anyway, like you say, but still, I don't know. I, can't, I think it's kind of funny and I started doing it and then I kept doing it. I need to do more of those videos. I got a bunch of the stuff that I got that I need to do videos of. So all these are 62s, except there's three in the front of the roll here that were 61s, including this one here that had a hint of color. Let's take a look at that one. Pedicured hands. I've, ne I've never had a pedicure or a manicure, I guess. Those would be hands, right? Never. Maybe I should. Ringo recommends it. This one's got a little bit of color to it, eh? Let's uh, move the light around a little. Not tons, but a little. Just enough to catch the eye. This is one of the 61s from the Mexico City Mint. You always assume I'm trying to keep the slab clean for filling. Nah! Nah. I mean, when I'm grabbing a slab and I'm doing... Well, what I do is I'll clean... I'll, oh, I thought I was showing this on camera. Sorry. What I'll do is I'll wipe the part like that I'm going to get... You know, I'll wipe this part to make it, you know, with, with a cloth to make sure it's free of fingerprints and stuff or, you know, before I do my coin video. But no, I mean, mostly if I'm grabbing it like all around here, it's not going to affect the video at all. Now, if I went like this, big fingerprint right in front, that would be bad. But you, you just don't do that, right? You just don't do that when you're doing a video or taking photos. No, one of the, that's the, that's one of the things that takes the longest to when I do my fo photos for my website. Remember that? Or uh, videos is preparing the slabs. I don't just grab the slabs and stick them under the camera. I got to look at all the coins first, look at the slabs. 
clean the, get all the stickers off of them, get out the Goo Gone, check out my Amazon list if you need Goo Gone. Um, if there's slight scratches or even heavy scratches or any kind of other marks, you got to get out the Plastex plastic polish and polish them to make the slab look nice. Um, if there's deep scratches, then I got to get some uh, mineral oil and put a dab of that on there so you shoot the coin through a bubble of oil and then it doesn't show any of the scratches on the slab. It'll still show the coin, but... No, preparing each slab before fo photos sometimes takes longer than doing the photos themselves. And then after I've done all that, I just, you know, I have them in a box, and then I do my photos, and I don't touch the center of the slab, you know, until I've done my photos, right? Simple as that. Know what I mean, Vern? Hey, Vern. Know what I mean? All right, what was I doing here? Um, that one's got a tiny touch of toning, and not, not enough to worry about, though. 1961... 1961 and four in this little pile. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Ah, one more roll. I thought we were done with the quarters. One more roll. What's up, Michael Thacker? Are we selling these today? Yeah. Vern, I'll start selling them if anybody wants any of these. Um, I just can't offer all options that I think I might be able to offer. Um, I don't know if I will be able to offer. What I wanted to be able to offer to people is to... You know, because I got 1961s here, and I got a bunch of 1962s of the quarters. Got a bunch of dimes, well, the one-tenth Balboa, we should say. They're the same size as a U.S. dime. Um, same silver content and everything. I'm hoping we find some 1961s in here so I can also offer a 61 and a 62. So, if, Vern, if you just wanted one of each, I could sell you a four-coin set, a 61, a 62, and of each. So far, I've only found 1962 so, so maybe all these are 1962s and I won't be able to do them. But if someone just wanted one of each coin, for example, like just a tenth and a quarter, I'd get you a 62 and a 62 real easily, and I know I got plenty of those. Or if Gringo says, huh, I want a whole roll of these, okay, I can get you 50 of the 1962s pretty easy. Things like that. Or if you wanted the special limited edition of only 40 of each, Michael Kittle Rare Coins Coin Keystador slabs, sample slabs, not for resale, even though I'm going to resell them. Um, well, actually, I'm going to sell them. I'm not going to resell them. You guys can't resell them is what that means, I think. But I don't know why they put that. But anyway, I could make some of those available. But yeah, I, so I haven't done like a video, I guess, Vern, or I haven't like written up an official list of here's all the options. Here's what you guys can do. And. But if anyone had to have them right now and doesn't wait until I actually go through all these and do a separate video offering them for sale, I mean, I could, uh, we could make it happen, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Hey, Ron, how you doing? Vern says, how much? Well, that is the million dollar question, isn't it? See what I did, see what I did there? Million dollar? Oh, I've got a little bit of toning to it. Million dollar question. Not a million dollar. So, the price. I'm thinking the price is going to be six bucks for a tenth, 12 bucks for a quarter, 18 bucks for two coins, add two bucks shipping, it's 20 bucks delivered. And I think most of them I'm just going to ship in an envelope that's protected. The coins are protected in two by twos. I'll have to pay, you know, a buck and a quarter or something to mail it. So I'll make a couple, you know, a couple quarters on the shipping. I think it's going to be a 20 bucks for a two coin set. And then if you ordered more than that, there'd be, it'd go lower. Um, and here I can just go through a couple of the numbers because you're thinking, wow, 20 bucks. Well, let's go through all the numbers and I'll tell you what we're doing. I, I, I ain't got nothing to hide here. Um, 
The silver value of these two coins alone, just the silver melt value at 25 bucks for two coins, it's about six and a half bucks. So selling them for 20 ship, that's a little high on silver. It's about three times the silver price. You're not going to get these at melt. You can go on eBay and look at all these. There's people that sell just one quarter for 20 bucks or one dime for 10. They're, they're all over the place. They're all over the place. I'm thinking of doing 35 for the slabs, Vern, for the pair, and then $5 shipped on those because I'd have to do them bola. So it'd be 40 bucks for the for the pair of sample slabs. So I'm thinking about doing 20 for the two coins, 40 if you want. 40 for these, uh, and 20 for one of each of the coins. I'm thinking that's what I'm thinking here, delivered. Um, and then if you wanted like 10 of each, there'd be a discount. If you wanted a whole roll of dimes, it'd be even cheaper. Um, but what I was going to show here is, for example, I mean, we can look at the eBay prices. I've looked at, I, there's one guy that had a full roll of the tenths available. He was asking 350 bucks for those. So that's seven bucks a coin if you got a full roll. That's the cheapest I saw on eBay. Um, anyway, but that's just eBay. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I know that these are good prices and they're fine. Let me show this. So here's the 1962 quarter. Again, there's the melt value, 450, and then the dime's worth another buck 80 ish or so. Uh, 4 million mintage, and they're saying VFs are 10 bucks, XFs 12, mint state 15 to 25 on those. So offer them at 12 bucks. I think that's fair. And based on what I see others selling these for, the nice ones, and these are all going to be 64s or 65s. Might be some 63s, might be some 66s. Might be some 63s, might be some 66s. Old Bell, welcome, welcome, welcome. And then I can show the 1961. He has even a higher catalog value. I'm not saying these are the actual values. You guys got to do your own figure in. Here's the 1961. Mintage of only 2 million, a much lower mintage. VFs 10, XF 15, mint state 25 to 35. Again, offering them for 12 bucks. I think that's in, I think that's reasonable. All right, and then let's look, just look for fun at the 1962 one tenth and see the information they give on that. Another. Yeah, and there's a silver note, about dollar eighty-one, vintage of five million. They say excess four bucks, mint state sixty at six, sixty-three is twelve bucks, and offering these at about six bucks a pop. I think that's in the ballpark. I think that V3 is going to need some of these. Yeah. So, I again, I haven't really set it in stone again until I get like a full count, but I'm pretty confident that's what I'm going to offer the singles at. Um, so 20 bucks gets you the two coins delivered, right? 18 bucks for the pair plus two bucks shipping. I think if like somebody wanted... 10 quarters instead of 12 coins and then being 120 I'd like take 10 bucks off and then if someone wanted 10 dimes instead of being 60 bucks I'd do a 55 or something you know something like that or if you wanted 10 of each instead of doing oh math is hard uh 180 bucks I guess would be the price for 10 of each I'd do it for like I don't know 150 bucks or so right I think 30 bucks off if you're getting quantity and then for like a full roll of dimes, because I know I got a ton of the dimes, instead of being 300 bucks, I'd do like 250 and take like 50 bucks off the price. You know, so that's just rough in it. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. I think those are fair. Again, you can search around and you can try to figure out what they go for. I mean, I could probably even bring it up on the screen. Why not, right? Let me go to eBay. I haven't looked at this in a while, so maybe I'm going to be shooting myself in the foot hard here. But uh, I'm not too concerned about that because I know what we have and I know what we're doing. How about that? Let me just go search in, what am I going to search? 1961 Panama 1 fourth and see if that brings up anything. And that didn't bring up too much there. Well, there's the stuff all over the map. 
what did I say we're going to sell these at? About 12 bucks a pop. Let's go to share screen and just see what this has. This has circulated ones, eight, eight, eight for a cleaned one. Four ninety. This one's still got bids going. I'm kind of. I should probably just look at the buy it now. Is only here's twenty four ninety nine for an AU. Okay, so twelve seems cheap there. This one says uncirculated, but it doesn't look like what I have. Still ten bucks. Here's a graded sixty five for fifty four bucks. Again, I think ours are that quality. We're close. Uh, here's a quarter and a tenth. For 15 bucks, and these don't look that nice. Let's see. What else do we got? Here's an MS66. That's a nice one. Here's a quarter uncirculated, 25 bucks or best offer. So, yeah, I think here's one 33 bucks or best offer. Again, this is what people are asking. So, do your own due diligence and you can double check me. And if you guys think my prices are crazy and fair, send me a strongly worded email. But I think, I think, <laughs> I think it's fair. Here's a like an AU looking coin, dirty for 19 bucks. This one looks really nice, actually. This one's probably a good deal. Maybe you should buy this one. I don't know. That well. Yeah, that one actually, well, I don't know. I'd have to look at the full thing, but that looks BU. Looks like some scratches, maybe, but $9.95 plus four bucks shipping. So I guess I'm still cheaper. That's 14 bucks and I'm at 12. Yeah, this one's 34 bucks for a BU. Yeah, okay. So. There we go. Uh, 1962. Let's just look at the 10th bell, though, and see where they're all at. See if six bucks is fair or not. Here's one, 1590 your best offer. Seven bucks plus a buck shipping. 25 bucks, 25 bucks. Three dollars, but that's an auction, so we don't know what that's going to end at. Here's another auction. Here's 50 of them, BUs, for 350 bucks. Again, I'd be about two fifty for the roll. Yeah, so I, I mean, just looking at this, you know, I'm 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 in the ballpark, if not way under it. Yeah, I think so. This looks like a nice coin. Eleven bucks, twelve bucks, and I'd be at six bucks. Here's an ugly one that you can get for six bucks. Anyway, again, I know the prices are right. You guys can double check me if you disagree, but uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's going to be where, about what it's going to be for uh, anyone wondering that. Okay, uh, now what? Oh, no, Michael Thacker. I mean, I just want to double check myself too because I don't want to look. I know when I bought these, the plan was to yes, I buy a huge bulk lot, and then of course when you piece them out two coins at a time or even a one roll at a time it's a lot more work but eventually you hope to profit this is a profit deal you know it is michael kittle rare coins is a profit deal sorry you know no apologies needed really i guess but it's a business um but i knew when i before i even bought the deal i kind of looked around at prices i knew what others sell for and I knew I wanted to be well below that and still be able to make a few bucks for myself, make it fun, have some fun content, get people some good coins. And uh, I think they call that a win-win situation is what they call it, Michael Thacker. I hope that's the case, but we'll see. Or will I end up having 2,000 of these sitting on my uh, shelf in the safe for the next few years? Who the hell knows? <laughs> Time will tell. But it looks like Vern wants at least a couple. And B3 might want a couple, so that's cool. Same thing I did back in the day. I mean, you guys might remember. I bought a horde of Swiss francs, as Alfred just mentioned. Swiss. And Gringo loves to put that Swiss command in, but I'm going to beat him to it. Um, I can't remember how many coins were in that group, but it was... Hundreds and hundreds of coins. All BU silver Swiss francs. I got a decent deal because I bought a bulk lot and I was able to part them out and get a lot of people a lot of cool coins. I know one person even sent one of them in and got it graded PCGS MS67. I told everybody, yeah, there's 65s and 66s and 64s. 
I didn't know there were any 67s. I didn't really look. I mean, I sorted those out by quality a little bit. I said like an A group and a B group. And people that bought some coins out of the A group, which was their nicer coins, just based on a quick view, they got some really great coins. The B coins are still great, too. Um, I have some left. I know we're out of all the five francs. We're out of... Um, one of the A, I think the A group, two francs I might be out of. I know I got some of the one franc coins around still. I don't know how many, but I should update that video or, but nobody's going to go back and watch that video. Well, I guess they will because we keep putting a link in. I know I was updating the totals in the description at one point. I haven't updated that in quite a while. So those are not correct, but I know I got, I got some not tons but that was a fun deal and we gave away a lot of them as well and that was fun and got a lot of people a lot of cool coins that i hope everybody enjoyed and that's what this whole the point of this one is too people like uh silver these are again the same silver content as the u.s coins of this size from the 60s these are all 1962s. Ooh, that one's got a little color, doesn't it? Let's take a look at that one. Let's take a peek at that one. So at the set you want to see? They're nice coins, aren't they? And Michael Thacker, I'm not going to beat around the bush or tease you guys or fool you. The ones I used for the giveaways were not the top end ones for the most part. You know? They were more of the B group, probably. And those are still amazing coins. They're probably still a lot of MS 64s and 65s in the B group. A little bit of color there, right? Eh? That's cool. Quick touch on the obverse there. All right, let's get that out of there. And yeah, that's what I wanted to do right there. Okay, that's a 1962 as well. I'll just put that in the pile. Somebody will get that coin, I'm sure. This whole roll 62s, they are. So there's 10 more. Down there. All right, so out of all that we have six nineteen sixty ones. All right. Six nineteen sixty ones. And we have a hundred fourteen nineteen sixty twos. Beautiful. All right, let's get them bagged up. You're gonna keep until the next one. Yeah, they're fun. I mean they're beautiful coins, Mark. I wasn't saying that you were trying to say anything about it, no. Sorry if I, uh, you thought that. All right, let's get a couple baggies out. What do we need for these? Let's do those there. Get these at least bagged up and off to the side, hey? All right, so I'm going to mark this as... What's up, perplexed? And I gotta go. Ah, oh, we got over an hour left. I gotta go when the Illinois basketball game starts for sure. 40, 1962. Then we'll do another bag that has 40, 1962. So I know I need that. 
And what did I have over here? Can I combine a bag? Is this going to make me mess up? Maybe. I know I had... Here's one that has only 11 in it. Okay. Here's one that has 14 in it. <laughs> I would have messed this up totally. Okay, that's probably good. So the 6 1961, I'm going to take this bag that says 14. I'm going to cross that out. And write 20. That should be good. Hey there, Onabushu. Drink some water, of course. I'm going to put those in with the others. Save some plastic, right? There we go. Well, that one has 20. I'm going to update my list so I don't think I have more coins than I do. Bam. Perfect. All righty, then. Getting back, getting ready for dinner, going for some prime rib. Enjoy, Kyle. Enjoy. You know what? The more I eat beef in my in my years, the less I like prime rib. You're like, Kendall, what are you talking about? Maybe you just haven't had good prime rib. Eh, I've had decent prime rib. Problem with prime rib, in my opinion, is uh, you got a prime rib roast, let's say, right? I love ribeye steak. Okay, let's just be clear. Well, I mean, beef is good. I mean, if you if you give me the choice between prime rib and a plant, it's prime rib all day, right? My food eats plants, okay? I don't eat plants, Kyle. My food eats plants. Um, you cut a, you get a middle slice out of a big prime rib roast, and it's yeah, yeah. There's no seasoning. Yeah, you get some, you get some juice on it. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, yeah. I'd much rather have that cut into a steak. Have it seasoned liberally on both sides. Have a nice crust from being flame broiled, or even pan seared, or basted in the you know with some you know rosemary garlic butter. So, I mean, I want more flavor. Prime rib is after eating like a nice steak. Prime ribs like eh, eh, and it's the same piece of meat. You know, I'd much rather you slice that into a steak and. Stick to the filet or porterhouse? Yes, gringo, that's, those are fine too, but you want them grilled with a nice crust on both sides, tons of spice and flavor, right? You don't want a, you don't want a filet, you don't want a tenderloin roast where your, your filet is cut out of the center of that and there's nothing on it, it's just red meat. I mean, it's still going to be good and you're still going to eat it, especially with a nice au jus or a nice gravy or sauce on it. <laughs> Give me that A1. You got me that Heinz 57 sauce on a Mushu? <laughs> Kyle says picanha is really good. Never seen that. I, I go I go to the grocery store. I've seen it on YouTube. That's the only place I've ever seen it, Kyle. I go to the grocery store. I see all the cuts of meat. I even buy... Like, I did it um, a few weeks ago. Get this, okay? They had ground beef, right? To make hamburgers. Like, ground beef, which is like the crappy beef, right? Five ninety nine a pound. Don't forget to vote in November, everybody. By the way, it's an election year. Five ninety nine for ground beef. Okay, that was the cheapest they had. But on sale, they had untrimmed tri tip roasts for four ninety nine a pound. Four ninety nine a pound. So instead of buying the hamburger for five ninety nine a pound, I grabbed one of them tri tip roasts, took it over to the butcher, and say, "Hey, grind this up for me and repack it." I'm like, okay. So I got way better than hamburger for a dollar cheaper. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Make sure you, you know, you can, you can, most places, even the grocery store, if they're not busy, the butcher will grind up whatever the heck you want. They, those are good burgers, too. There's 10, 20, 30, and. Forty. Oh, I dropped two. Let's make sure those get in there. Forty. The quarters. Sirloin. Yeah, I mean, I've seen top sirloin. Is that the same thing? I don't know. Just like I think tri-tip is called something else, like on the East Coast. Like, like I never even like had tri-tip steaks that I've ever heard of. 
until I moved out to California and everybody talks about tri-tip this and tri-tip that. I think they call it something different East Coast, don't they? Or am I thinking of something different? I don't know. Omaha Steaks? Uh, I didn't... I didn't I did that one time because I got free knives with it or something. That The knives sucked, too. I wasn't that impressed with the Omaha Steaks. I don't know. Not that impressed. Well, given the price that you pay for them, I, I was expecting something amazing. And I don't know. But this was maybe 20 years ago, too, so I don't know. Trying to set them in there nicely to keep them as nice as possible. All right, so we got those. We got 11 more 62s, but we could make a full roll of that if we... Math is hard here. Okay, hold on. I got 34 there, so I need to take six out of here. Horse meat, is that what it is? <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't want to get a strongly worded letter from Omaha in the mail. Now we got 40. And then we got five remaining there. Did that math work out there? I don't know. So let's cross this baggie out, the 11, and change that to a five. Fiver. Oh, I just drew on my hand. Oh, well. If I was wearing gloves, that wouldn't have happened. So that is five of those. Huh? And then, when you live in the West, you're correct. Omaha Steaks, not great. Living in Florida. See, I guess we got, I mean, I don't know. I've been fine with the steaks I can get here in Key California. Especially if uh, you shop around, you know. A lot of good stores. A lot of overpriced stores. Uh, but yeah, I guess the, maybe. Yeah, I guess like. Uh, when I go to my parents' house and you buy it, you know, in Maui, like, Costco is the best place to get beef there, it seems like. Not a lot of... But they do have cattle ranches there in Hawaii, so... Okay, 40 more of the 1962 is... Let's go on that baggie. Yeah, what, what was the commercial on Abushu? It was like... Good cheese comes from happy cows and happy cows come from California. I think that was the commercial they used to put on all the time. Alright, so that is... Oh. It's trying to be 40 more. That's 40 more. Pile of silver there. Let me tell you. Make sure I got the counts updated there. Should be... I think I missed some coins there. Yes, I did. Okay, hold on. That's 40 and 40 and 40. We made three bags of that. Okay, cool. Now I got the correct count. Approximately 467 quarter bell boas total. Nice. 61 of them are 1961s and... The rest are 62. So, yeah, I don't really have too many 61s here. California cows are happy cows? Well. They better quit uh, emitting so many, uh, so much carbon dioxide, though. There's going to be no cows in California if people have their way. All right. Um, let's clear off the dust a little bit before I start getting into these. Before I start getting into these, uh, Got my box over here, an empty box. Start getting these cleared away before we start getting into the dimes. There's the 61. I'm going to try to keep the 61 separate. So. Group them together a little bit, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. It's the 61. Wait. Oh, these are such cool coins. I like them a lot. 
<laughs> Ranch is making jerky. Yeah. Wouldn't wouldn't really shock me, would it? Are these all the tents? Those are all tents up there. Okay, cool. And then this, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna slide that right in that bag for now. Just keep it a little separate, and then perfect. Okay. All right. Now. Get these out of the way. Wow, oh, that's a lot of times. I don't even want to start going through them. But that's what we're here to do, right? I gotta start going through them. I mean, unless I just assume they're all 1962s and just be done with it. But let's just open a roll and see what we have. It's empty now. All right, what do we have here? What do we have here? 1962. Let's just put one under there for now. Shiny party. I should have done these first, but these are so much smaller that the uh, harder to read. <laughs> but yeah, these are just all really nice. Seven, that should be eight, nine, ten. And yeah, every one of them's a 1962 so far. In this roll. I swear when I bought these, I thought it was a mix of dates of 61s and 62s. Maybe that was just for the quarters and I was thinking something different. It's okay. Shiny white. <laughs> yeah. Fresh. Unlike that one is a little toned. These don't make as loud of a silver sound either when I'm stacking them. I guess they're smaller, right? <laughs> so what I think we're going to do is I might just be assuming and you know what happens when you assume I mean if you're smart you're usually correct, right? Isn't that what they say? I think that's what they say. Uh, I think we might just be assuming that all these are going to be 1962s at some point. But I guess at some point I will also look at them all to verify, but I don't know if I'm going to be doing that right this, right at this time. <laughs> Alright, there's only 8 coins here and 2 under the scope. That's 50. And they're all 1962s. We'll do a couple more rolls at least live on stream and I don't know this is going to kill my eyes and ruin me for the day if I do all these 29 rolls on stream live Ringo's going to burb okay let's look at this one a little bit of toning huh a little dirty color is what that one is well still mint state but dirty the other side. Beautiful. There's 50. Alright, we'll keep that in the group. Let's just grab another random roll. Let's see what we have. Open. 
you went to Walmart, was looking at the chicken breast, and there was some kind of war. Oh, that's not good. I mean, at the grocery store, you know, there's going to be some bugs, you know, but like if you're into veggies, you know, fruits and veggies, and you're looking at ears of corn, and, you know, you got to pull back the silk a little bit and the husk and the silk, and you're going to see a worm or two there every now and then, right? But you don't expect it on your chicken. Oh, man. Well, good thing you saw it there, Tim, and you didn't wait until you bought it and got home. Normal box of dimes. Yeah, I, I, I can't do dimes. Oh, there's a toned one. I don't know if that's spectacular, but it's uh. Yeah, interesting. Not really colorful, but it's toned. That was me hitting my light on my camera stand. A little scratched up on the obverse. Wouldn't grade too high. Roseanne, what's up? You missed trivia already. Speaking of trivia, no, nah, we didn't do any trivia. Um, man, maybe I'll just leave that one under there for now, just to give that corner of the screen some attention. Got something fun for show and tell here. We'll take a, we'll pause for station identification here. You are watching Michael Kittle Rare Coins live on YouTube. Um, almost a mom and pop style box. Oh, you want me to? Should I sell some of these to the mom and pop people? Sell some of these so they can stuff their rolls. What do you guys think? What do you think, Alfred? Should I sell some of these to the mom and pop people? And then they can put one, put some of these blazers in each of their diamond scent rolls. And you see, there was this couple, and they stored all their they collected coins for years, and they stored them in in uh, they stored them in wheelbarrows, and they just took wheelbarrows full of coins to the bank, and where their granddaughter is, and their granddaughter really didn't love them, apparently, because she didn't tell them, hey, Grandpa and Grandma, you got some valuable coins in here, even gold coins from time to time. And instead, they sold them to somebody else, and we profit off this stuff now. We don't roll these ourselves. We actually roll these ourselves, and they're totally rigged, but we're not going to talk about that. Oh, they put them in buckets. That's right. We stored them in buckets, and then they put them in wheelbarrows. And what a bunch of... Okay, anyway. Got this here. This was uh, this is on loan... From a member of my coin club. History of the United States Mint. Look at this, Roseanne. History of the United States Mint. They don't make books like this these days, do they? History of the... Anybody want to guess what year this is from? Anyone? Anyone have any ideas? Take a guess. As I check to make sure all these are 1962s. And try to avoid breathing too heavy on the coins at the same time. Any guesses? No Googling, Roseanne. We don't allow Googling in our trivia here. No Googling. All right, we got a 1934 and 18, 1889. 1929, 1946, 1902. A 1928. Holy cow. You guys are all over the place. Books are hard, aren't they? This one's literally hardcover. Tee hee hee. Yeah, all these are 1962s that I'm looking at so far. If I see anything different, I'll let you know. Or if I see anything... Special, I'll let you know, but so far, I mean, they're all really nice coins. I'm not disappointed in the least. We got some guesses there, right? Eh? Let's see, 1902, 1928. Let's take a look. Got to be careful with it because it's an old book, and it's not mine. But I know the guy paid 20 bucks for it, so if I really screw it up, maybe that's my most uh, damage I'll have. Philadelphia, George G. Evans, 1888. 1888. Closest without going over is nobody. Alfred went over. He loses. That was a pretty good guess, though. Illustrated History of the United States Mint. 
with a complete description of American coinage from the earliest period to the present time. The process of melting, refining, assaying, and coining gold and silver fully described. Pretty cool, huh? And it has a glossary of mint terms and the latest official tables of the annual products of gold and silver in the different states and foreign countries with monetary statistics of all nations. A nice little index here to go through stuff. Anyway, Razan, the whole purpose of this is I got to borrow this book, and I'm hoping maybe this will generate some some uh some unique trivia questions that we can use. Will the information be good? Has anything been learned since 1888? I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? It says Chinese circulated square bronze coins as early as 1120 BC. Oh, nice. Portraits. There's a lot of words in this book. It says it's illustrated, but there's there's some pictures. Look at that. Pretty cool. But it goes through all kinds of stuff. There's the counting board for coins, how they count them. There's one of the old presses. Look at that. Look at that lady. Look at that. That's how she had the dress for work. You see that? That was the uniform back then, I think. Pretty fun. Shows them the cutting machines and... And a lot of this is probably, I mean, this is all great information, you know? Automatic weighing scales, because, you know, a lot of this stuff is uh, good good stuff. Roman coins, uh, those are some patterns and some, there's some old silver dollars. What else is in here? I don't know, I only read through it a little bit so far. I think those are Confederate coins. Yeah. CSA half dollar. Yeah, all kinds of good stuff in here. Then there's all kinds of, uh, even a price guide. You guys want to know how much some of this stuff's worth? All right, let's see here. <laughs> partial list of metals also which may be obtained at the mint so this is a price list of stuff you can still buy from the mint a bunch of these old metals for a dollar fifty to three dollars this one's eight dollars 64 millimeter metal with general grant presidential metals all a buck fifty to 250 a piece that's pretty cool those are expensive a lot more expensive today. I had one of these before, the Cyrus Field Atlantic Cable Metals. They wanted eight bucks for those back in the day. Wow. Fine gold medals. There's the Abraham Lincoln one. The time increases his fame. Twelve bucks for a gold Lincoln medal. Washington and Jackson gold medal. Four dollars and fifty cents. These are small. These are small gold medals. Sixteen millimeter, ten millimeter. Um, yeah, these are all silver ones here. Six bucks, three bucks, 35 cents, 25 cents for small ones. Yeah, so it's not a... Now, this is coin prices of what they're worth, though. This one here. So, yeah, the old 1652 shillings, 25 bucks, 40 bucks. What, what should we look up here? Hmm... Those are all colonial stuff. Silver dollars, 1794. Even back in 1888, it was 125 bucks for this eight for the 1794 dollar. I mean, it worth a ton more today. Now they only had two grades, fine and good. And fine probably meant like real nice, and good just meant average. That's probably what it meant. Hmm. 20 cent pieces. Now remember, 20 cent pieces were mostly dated 1875. So they were only, what, 13 years old when this book was published. 
1875 20 cent piece worth 40 cents, 30 cents in good. It's a double face value. That's pretty cool, right? That's kind of fun. <laughs> oh, man. That's pretty wild. Wouldn't you like to buy a bunch of those at two times face? Chain sent for 20 bucks. Oh, that's pretty, that's up there. Yeah, fun stuff, right? They have the $4 gold in here? They don't, do they? They got the $50 California slugs for 65 bucks. $15 over face value. You would think it would still be worth 20 cents. Nah, Razan, they were collectible. Like, think about it. They only made them 1875 to 78. So right after they stopped, they were pretty collectible right away. And, these, and again, that's the price for high grade ones. I mean, you see people pay premiums right now for Ike dollars. If, if I had a roll of BU Ike dollars, they're not worth a dollar each. Now, th those are 50 years old or 40 years old now, 40 to 50 years old. But yeah, people would pay double face value for really nice ones. Apparently. Yeah, I'm just seeing if they had the $4 gold, the Stellas in here, but maybe they don't. Unless they list them elsewhere here. No, they don't. Okay, that's fine. Probably because they're not real coins. 1849 Double Eagle, $1,000. Well, that coin's in the Smithsonian right now. There's only one of them known. There were supposedly two minted. Nobody knows where the other one is, supposedly. $1,000. That's. I mean, it's in the Smithsonian now and probably worth about 50 million bucks. Kind of cool. The Morgan Stanley dollars? <laughs> Do they have any dollars even in here? Let's see. Uh, silver dollars, yeah. Um, they only go up to 1878, which would have been trade dollar there, and it's a buck twenty for a trade for an 1878 trade dollar, and that's in the best condition, you know. So barely over face value for all the trade dollars, and all the seeded dollars are like a dollar, two dollars, dollar eighty. Some of the better dates are higher, but yeah. Crazy, huh? I mean, even this, think about it. A seventeen ninety-five silver dollar in fines three dollars, a dollar fifty in good. I mean, that's barely three times face value for a seventeen ninety-five dollar. But again, it was eighty years old, you know, ninety years old. It wasn't super old. Yeah, they don't have any Morgan dollars in here. Except for proofs. Proof Morgan dollars, eighteen seventy nine to eighty four, two dollars each. It's a double face value. Yeah, it'd be nice to go and save get some of these and save them, right? It's always fun to look at. Yeah, double gold double eagles. Any of them dated 1855 to 1879, $21 each. $1 over face value for all the gold double eagles. Crazy. Except for the first few years, they're $25 each. They're just worth face value if they're circulated, though. Fun stuff. I didn't see $4 gold here. Hmm. I wonder if they have it in the index. Gotta be careful. I don't want to mess up the spine of the book. Can I just look up $4 gold? No. Hmm. Don't know. Rough pattern coins. Did they list that in here? Nope. Okay. Well, that's fun. Back to work. Back to work. But anyway, Rosanne, what I'm hoping is going through that, maybe we could get a couple, uh, couple trivia questions out of it if I skim through there and read some of that. Your great-grandparents failed you? Yeah, no doubt, right? Come on. I go through stuff like my... Gr I remember my grandpa in one of our... In, in his living room, they had a closet. 
where they had a big trunk full of like old stuff that was from his parents and their parents. And then, of course, when my grandpa passed, I didn't see any of that stuff ever again. It all disappeared with other people. But I remember going through it with them and it was a bunch of books and pictures and eat like even like the old tin pit, like the, you know, the ones they did on tin, like in the Civil War era, like of family members that I don't even know who they were, you know, but I'm sure they had like names on them or. Or maybe he knew who they were if I would have asked him when we would have wrote that down. But I remember like the oldest and thing that he was happiest about was like an old family Bible that was from like the real like from like 1810 or like 1790-ish or something. And Because my family was originally from the New York area, like Albany, and then they moved to Wisconsin and Illinois in the early 1800s. But it was from when the family was still in New York and... And in the front of it, it had, like, everybody's birthdays and names and stuff like that. But it was, like, a really old Bible. And I guess old Bibles are worth something, but they saved that. They could have saved just some change, you know? Some pocket change. Anyway, I'm, you know, it's nice that I have that, I guess. I guess it's nice. But I, don't, I have no idea where that stuff is today. I mean, some another family member got everything, and that's fine. I wasn't expecting anything, you know? Of that. But it would be fun to, like, look at some of that stuff. I would think. But, yeah. I should have saved coins. But, yeah, start now. Here's a tone one. Look at this one. That one's not horrible. That one's actually pretty good. I kind of like that one. It's got some life to it. It's common to put hair from children's first hand. Oh, really? I don't remember if it had hair. I don't remember. I kind of like that one. And the other side, right, 1962. I like it. Okay, what do we got here? We got... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight more there. And the two under the scoop. Perfect. All right, I think maybe one more roll. We'll just spot. How about this one? I'm thinking they're all going to be 1962s based on the five bags of them we got here. Six, seven more. So f seven rolls we've opened. Maybe I'll do two more rolls. And that will leave 25 unopened, maybe. It's semi-annual. It's been uh, August 2022 is when we looked at them last time, Roseanne. No, I'll, I'll sell them. I'm selling. But right now I'm kind of going through and doing a count before I do like a separate video offering them for sale. I need to see what I have, you know, so I know what I can offer. Like if I find that I have any 1961s, then I can offer two different dates to people. But if they're all 1962s, I can't do that. And it's looking like I might not be able to do that. Which is fine. But yes, yeah, so after I go through these and get the final count, and I'll do a separate video with uh, some highlights and, you know 
give the prices and writing at least and we already talked about it a little bit ago but it's fine semi-annual august 2022 is when i looked at these last i thought it was only about a year ago but it was really like a year and a half but again you know since then we got the graded ones back so that's good or i mean the sample slab ones back see those rosanne or did you miss those too did you see those Michael Kittle Rare Coins, Coin Keystador. Get it? Like, so it's got Balboa, Conquistador, and I said Coin Keystador. Get it? Get it? Yeah, time flies. And these are samples, not for resale. No, August 2022 was the last stream I did with these. There, you want to see? Hold on, where is that at? I had it up. Uh, let's click here. And let's click here. And let's go like that. And let's go like that. See? August 31st, 2022. Searching a Panama Silver Horde. Balboa Missions Park, right? August 31st, 2022. Remember when I sold coins already? Yeah, I need to get back to doing that, Steve. I do got a couple auctions pretty much ready. I don't know. Do you want to buy something right now, Steve? You might get a good deal because there's hardly anybody in my chat watching right now. What do we got, like 10 viewers or something like that? Yep. I don't stream regularly enough to get the crowd anymore, unfortunately. We'll change that, though. We'll start streaming more. Hi, right, you want to buy something? When was the slab box open? What does that mean? Oh, you mean for these? I didn't do an unboxing of uh, these samples. I didn't know what the... It was a giant... I, cause I had 80 of them done. 40 of each, 40 of the tenths, and 40 of the quarters. And It was a giant box. I'm like, what the heck is this? And I didn't know what it was until I opened it, so... The Morgan stream is one. So B3, I got a couple auctions. I got a peace dollar auction I could do. I got, I don't know, a bunch of peace dollars I could start selling. I could do, I got one that's all silver rounds. I could do another kilo of silver. You remember I got those bags of the silver kilo, just, you know, a couple hundred world coins all mixed up. Let me go through them one at a time and then sell them. I could do, do, do more of those. Um... Yeah, we got all kinds of stuff that we could do. It's just got to pick a time to do it, and I just got to do it. Quit screwing around. Is that not right? That's missing one right there. Just trying to get the accurate count before I bag these up. And I could just re-roll them, but if I re-roll them, then they're going to be mixed up with all the others, and I want to be able to see what I got. Yeah, again, another roll of all 1962s. That's fine. Okay, piece of dollars would be a fun stream. Yeah, we should do that. A foreign silver hunt. We will do another one of those. How about let's pick this roll right here. I'll put up one more maybe. The world silver kilos are pretty good. I thought about it. I was actually thinking about doing that today, Steve. Just, But I want to give people a little heads up that I'll be live. Because if I just started doing that and only had, what, 14 people watching or whatever we have, then that might not, that might not have gone over well for me, you know? So I gotta give people a little heads up that we're gonna be selling stuff, I think. And then um and tomorrow being Easter, I knew like usually those take two days, at least. I wouldn't wanna be streaming on Easter, of course. Now did this one come out of that pile or did that one just lean up against there? Dang it. I gotta count these again real quick. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's ten there. 
Should just be able to stack the piles next to each other and it should tell me. Oops, look good. Yeah, looks good. Okay. All 1962 so far. And I'm not checking both sides of every one of these. So could I be missing another toner here and there? Maybe. Hope I'm not missing too many because they do look nice. There's one that I see with a little color. You need to say Marmello's name three times in the show. Uh oh. I don't know. It's a, it's still kind of early in New Zealand. Got a little bit of color in the shield. Yeah, the foreign kind lot, lots are pretty good. I like doing those too. Alright, you know, we'll just uh we'll leave that one under there for now. Just to have something to look at. No, I apologize, there one that we haven't been doing more streams. Just uh I don't know. Just haven't been doing it. I mean a lot of it, I mean, was my computer blowing up on me. Back in, what was it, November, December? It took me way too long to get back up and running for various reasons. But, uh, so that was part of it. Not all of it, but that was a big part of it, actually. Why we haven't been doing as much on the coin channel. But again, Thank you guys all for being here, and those of you guys watching it later, thanks for watching. Always appreciate the support. There's a lot of communities here on YouTube. And uh, I think I'm one of the first to say that it's one of the best communities of all the communities, the coin community, don't you think? I mean, there's a lot of communities that could be called the best, right? What do you think, Razan? A lot of communities on YouTube call themselves the best. Like, we're the best community on all of YouTube. But the YouTube coin community might even be, of all those best communities, it might be the best of the best of the best, don't you think? Could be. I don't know. Could be the best of the best. Yeah, broken arm. You know what? That's right, Gringo, because that happened in end of July. And that really kept me from wanting to do anything, really, for months. You're right. That, I almost forgot about it. I guess that's the answer, Ogier. I kind of forgot that I had a broken arm a year ago, right? Almost uh, half a year ago. No, it, it, was some, it was months and months of healing. I, you know, I'd say it's 99% back to normal. I know, like... Every now and then, like, I feel like it doesn't feel 100% right, you know, and or like if I overdo things or if I sleep on it weird or, yeah. But I think it's, uh, I think we're fine. As fine as we're going to get, I guess. Some people say, I mean, it, and it, I think it keeps getting better even still. Like, that's what they told me. Like, I went through physical therapy for at least, I don't know, four or five months and got as far as I seem to be getting with them, and it, it was just basically going there and not getting any, but it's like, they said sometimes it takes a year to get fully back to normal, or maybe never, you know, so. Uh, what was Alfred saying there? Alfred. Oh, I'm missing chat. 14 people watching, would that be the time I sold the extra? Yeah, we, we shouldn't sell the best coin first, right? That's right. That crown was nice. That crown was nice. Yeah, maybe when I do the next world silver lot, we won't do the best coin first. <laughs> the goodest community? You think we've been downgraded? But we're still one of the best communities. So you're saying we're not the best of all the best communities anymore, Razan? What do you think? The uh, Fall Guys gaming community is better? <laughs> I don't know about that, Roz and Gr Maybe the Rocket League streamers? I don't know. Baseball card people? 
like like Alaska box breaks, formerly known as SoCal box breaks. <laughs> Alfred got Alfred got his crown. <laughs> you know what else I still got on my desk to talk to Alfred about that's only been sitting here for years, literally years. Let me reach over and find it. Here we go. Only been sitting here for years, Alfred. Remember these? I got a few of these. I know Alfred mentioned that he was interested in them, and I just set them to the side and never did anything else with it. Elizabeth and Philip. Uh, Ballywick of Guernsey, 25 pence. Remember these? Got that one. Oh, what other one that I have? Here's another one down here somewhere. I think these are, uh, what, 25th anniversary, silver wedding anniversary? Yeah, it says right there. Silver wedding anniversary, 1972. Uh, this one's Gibraltar from the Royal Mint. There's a note on your desk about it, too? Huh. Maybe we should do a desk tour someday, huh? The Kittle and Alfred desk tour. Do, like, a stream yard. There's some pretty cool coins, though. Yeah, like, just look at these. Mello would like that. The Royal Ciphers, huh? Silver Wedding. This one's Bermuda. Bermuda, Bahama. Come on, pretty mama. Alfred, this is mostly Pokemon cards right now, huh? I thought I had another one. Oh, here it is. I do have another one. This one is... Shiny Party is what it is. Silver Wedding Anniversary. Where's this one from? Isle of Man. Oh, this is the one Mel Mello wants. Oh, I might have to have Mello and Alfred outbid each other for this one, right? Mello just loves Isle of Man for some reason. Should we do Isle of Man GeoGuessr right now to break up the stream a little bit? All right. Your 1928 still on it? It's actually not on my desk, Razan. It's in a box of things to mail out. Well, I got a box of things that people have asked. Like, you know how, like, I buy, like, people buy stuff, like, in an auction and say, oh, hold that for me and put it in my wallet or whatever they say. It's not whatever. I got a box of things. Some of it people have paid for and some of it people haven't. I Now to go back and figure out which is which. It's kind of nuts. Like one customer, there's a gold coin here that they bought for me for $300, for example. I'm looking at it right now. They've paid 60 bucks so far. So they owe me 240 bucks. But it's still here. Now with gold prices changing, maybe it's a really good deal now. I don't know. Maybe it... But have I emailed the person in the last six months to say, hey, you want to settle up and get this taken care of? No, I'm not pressuring them or anything. If I, did that, Does that person even remember that they did this deal with me over a year ago? I don't know. <laughs> but I got 60 bucks, so I probably should figure it out. You know, just some stuff like that. And I think Razan's coins in there somewhere. And Roseanne, you got to pay me a bunch of money for that still, don't you? Or did you already got? Is that already a deal? Look at this one I got sitting here too. Is that person alive anymore? Yes, they were in stream here earlier. All right, look at this from Canada. You know what this is, Alfred? You called dibs one year plus ago. Oh, so Mello doesn't get that. Okay, you already had the. Okay, Alfred's got dibs. Fine. Alfred, I'm just waiting for silver prices to go up to like 40 or 50 bucks so I can get a fair price out of them. <laughs> That's what I'm really doing. No. Look at this. Canada. Look at this. They just put the coin raw in there. No capsule or anything. That one's got some cool toning to it. That one's nice. Can I get this out of here? Oh, man. That's in there. Not telling on that side. Oh, 
Yeah, it's not the best toning I've seen on these, but it is toned, for sure. Yeah, cool. Uh, British Columbia. Centennial. Let's get that back in there. Get the coin back in there. Coin's starting to pop out of there now that I did that. Perfect. Awesome. I don't know what I'm doing with that. What else we got laying around? What's this one? A little gold coin I just found. Who knows? SAF Games Colombo. Uh, sealed at the Royal Mint. United Kingdom. 2005? Is that the year that this was done? I don't even know what this is. Maybe that's not gold. I don't know. Is that gold? That's silver. Maybe it's silver. That might be silver. Maybe it's gold. 500 rupees? Yeah, it's gold. Cool. Stuff I've picked up and didn't know what to do with it the day I bought it, so it just gets put somewhere and like this one too. This is a silver one. Square coin. Lion and an elephant. One hundred rupees. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it doesn't. It didn't look like it was pure gold or anything. It just didn't have the right color. That's why I was sort of doubting myself. Sort of. Sort of, kind of. Know what I mean? What's in this box? What's in the box? What's in the box? We just do mystery unveiling? What is this? Pop Joy Mint. Ooh, this one's cool. Centenary of the birth of Joy Adamson. This the third coin in the world to be made of silver and crystal. Nice. Okay. It's kind of fun. Republic of Sierra Leone. It's got a lioness face etched in the crystal. Yeah, it's a piece of crystal in the center of the coin. So you can see through it. And it's got a whole bunch of cats all around the edge. Kind of fun, right? And of course, on this side. 2010. Okay. You want to know what the first two were? Um, I know one was a penguin, I think. A, a crystal penguin. Uh, hold on, I can show you one of them at least. I can show you one of them because I've had one of them. Kind of want that one. Uh oh. Green goes, uh, Getting a shopping list going on my stream here. Uh-oh. Uh, let me look this up real quick. Let me go to my website. Remember my website? I remember. I remember. It's on my world archive, because I know I've had one before. I know one has an orange crystal and one has a blue crystal, I believe. I think there's been more than that since, too, so there are more than three around. Let me see if I can find the one that I had. There it is. Let me open that and let me share my screen. I've, I've had this one before. It's a turtle. Sea turtle. 2009. They made only 5,000 of them. I had a graded one. Piece of blue crystal. They struck at the Pop Joy Mint and originally sold at 129 bucks. And at the time, this was the only graded one. British Indian Ocean Territory. That's not Fiji. That's not Fiji. 
Uh, when was the last time you got a package from Kittle? Uh, it's been a while, huh? Um, I got stuff here for me. I got something here. Gringo, remind me. This is you. This is you that sent this, right? I haven't. I don't know. I'm thinking this was Gringo. That that looks like his writing. I don't know. I'm supposed to send this to Alfred in the next pass in that package. When did Gringo send this to me? I don't know. But it's in uh, Alfred's pile here. Well, Alfred's got a pile, and Alfred's got a box. Alfred's got a pile, and he's got a box. So he's got a. Uh, Whenever you're ready, Alfred, I can get stuff in the mail to you. Including maybe some Swiss Chalet packets. Oh my goodness. I thought I had a penguin coin, too. Let me look. Uh, would it be in my archive on my website? That's definitely not up to date, is it? My website's almost up to date. Yes. This was the first one, I think. This was the first one. Life Cycle of the Penguin, it was. So it's got all the different, you know. From the South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands, 2007. This was the first one in Crystal, I think. 5,000 Mintage. It's PCGS graded. What's up, DTT? There was another one as well from long ago. Well, that might have made it in the last package, though, Gringo. I don't know. Or it might be in the box of stuff for Alfred. I don't I don't know either. The spot that the U.S. rents as a mill. Is that uh, Diego Garcia? Is that where that's at? I know Diego Garcia is out in the Indian Ocean somewhere, right? We gotta have some place to land our planes, you know? And didn't we keep terrorists there too for a little bit, maybe? Something like that, maybe. Yeah, that's a that was a cool coin. I have no idea what these go for now. It wouldn't surprise me if they're it, either way it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me if they're like several hundred dollars each now. Or it wouldn't surprise me. I guess it would shock me if they went for like fifty or sixty bucks or something like that. Because if I could find these for like 50 or 60 bucks, I'd probably be buying them and selling them at coin shows. You know what I mean? Because any, like anytime I show these to people, they're like, whoa, those are awesome. Yeah. Anyway. Or they say, oh, that's weird. But usually they say, whoa, those are awesome. Oh, maybe I should uh, keep the certificate here. You know there's some of those islands in the Indian Ocean that the U.S. and British both nuke the heck? <laughs> no, well, most of those are in the Pacific Ocean for what America nuked. The British, didn't they nuke all the stuff around Australia and New Zealand and maybe some Indian Ocean? Or, no, French? Didn't the French do the, blow up a bunch of stuff in the Indian Ocean or something? Or were they blowing up stuff in South America? I don't know. They were nuking stuff all around the place. I don't know, are we doing more show and tell? What else what's Kittle can what can Kittle find on the desk? I don't know. We ain't got too much more. That I'm seeing offhand. Yeah, that's probably enough, right? Probably. Most likely. Yeah, good enough. Alright, let me finish counting these silver dimes here. Silver court tenth bell boas, I should say. Yep, that was another 50 of them that were all 1962s. So that's four rolls in a row. We got seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twen
Um, did I ever give away the new Mista coin? I know we did. I think you sent me two of them, Alfred. One to keep and one to give away. Um, I would have to look through my baggie of giveaways here, which to double check. I can't remember if we gave that one away or not yet. <laughs> we gotta save that for a world coin stream, though, right? We can't be giving that away like right now, right? That'd be weird. That would be weird. What do I got here? Ah, uh, just some random Mardi Gras thing that somebody sent me, I think. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Okay. Anyway. Uh, we should do that. A multi... Wait, hold on. Multi-channel Hollywood word set search that I suggested. Yeah, but that would involve me packing up big heavy boxes full of rolls of Lincoln scents and mailing them all around the country and... That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Uh, what else do we got here? What is this? Oh, Roseanne, I got this laying around. What is this? Oh, that's cool. Oh, Maya Angelou sample slab for the, for the Long Beach treasure hunt. What's this coin? I don't know why this is on my desk, but it's a 2018 First Strike Silver Eagle. MS-70? Sure. Why not? Uh, Mexico Silver Libertad. Travel trade boxes. Um, I don't remember people really doing that in the community as well. I remember the, there was the one where everybody added stuff in the giveaway and put their stickers on it, and then it was all given away, right? But I remember, like, on the message boards, like, PCGS message boards, one guy would go, always put together a box of, like, I don't know, 50 different slabbed coins, and he'd put val We'd just use PCGS price guide for value. And when you got it mailed to you, it was like, I don't know, like 5,000 bucks worth of coins or something. And you could take anything you want, but you had to put in coins of equal PCGS value. So then, and then the next guy would get it mailed to him. It was like a tag box or something they'd call it. And then each people would update the thread with what they put in and what they took out. This is fun. This, these are looking ugly. The Error of the Century, Bahamas, New Zealand, and a mule. You ever see this one? The mule coin looks like crap in this one, though. But... Bahamas, Queen Elizabeth, Bahama Islands, Five Cents, 1966. 1967, Elizabeth, New Zealand. Two cent. Elizabeth, Bahama Island. Should be five cents on the other side? Oh, it's the New Zealand two cent on the other side. So it's got the New Zealand reverse and the Bahama obverse. Fun stuff, huh? That one looks like hell, though, doesn't it? I don't remember it looking that bad when I bought it. Maybe it's getting worse over time. Yeah. Mule coin. That's fun. Probably open that up and straighten out those coins someday. Yeah, that's cool. Capital plastic holder is what that is. When was that? Who was involved? Wait, what? Oh, Alfred. Bunch of gold coins and why someone replaced the gold with war nickel rolls? Oh, geez. Yeah, I don't remember that. I must not have been watching those channels. Roseanne, you need one of these, right? I got this. I just saw that on my... Look at that. We've got a golden-toned war nickel in this one. Little sample. And this nickel's grade 66 full steps as well. That. that was a really nice uh, steel scent, too. Hold on. Let me look at it. Yeah, that ain't bad. Look at that die crack on his head. 
Gotta check that out. Oh, I gotta zoom in, then focus. Sort of cool. Oh, well. Is this the one I stuck in your box? I don't know. Do you do you have one of these in your box? I don't know. Gringo, you got to remember. Half the time you tell me, oh, yeah, I want one of those. Put that in my box. Like I don't do it. Uh, you know, I just don't do it. I mean, this one could go in your box. I'm sure it could. No, I'm looking at your list of stuff. I do have a note on here to put a PCGS dual holder sample in your box. I don't know, is this one yours? Maybe this one's yours. Well, now that I see there's got a cool die crack, maybe it's uh not yours. I don't know. And there's the golden tone nickel. That's pretty cool. Look at that big old D on it. Razan, is that you that loves the big D? I, I can't remember. I know one of my viewers told me that, especially war nickels, because they got that giant D mint mark. Is that kind of die crack to the rim, too, on this one? What's going on with this slab? Was it Razan that's the one that loves the big D? I can't remember who told me that. One of my viewers, for sure. From the microscope light. That is a crack there, isn't it? I might be keeping this one. This one's got some interesting stuff to it. All right. Turn that stupid microscope light back on. Stick with the overhead and try to refocus this. It's close enough. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I don't think you're getting that one, Gringo. I might keep that one. I'll find you one of the others for sure. Okay, you got a splitting. Is the kilo in your box? Yeah, I got that one's in there. It made, makes it really heavy. Heck, Gringo, by the time you actually get that, so if silver prices keep going the way they're going, you're probably going to be getting that thing under melt. I don't know about that, but, I mean, shoot, how much longer? But it's silver the way it's going. What else we got over here? I'm just kind of peeking around at some of the junk over here. What do we got? Uh, that's a Lincoln 1909 double die. That's boring. Nobody likes those. What's this? Empire of Ethiopia coin. For some reason, I got a Franklin half and a 2x2. Two two. What the hell is that all about? There's a silver coin from Ghana. I don't know what half this stuff is. Okay. The Aussie, I got that set aside. Yeah, I got to do that. Yes, absolutely, Alfred. I, that'll be a nice short uh, short video. What's silver at? Like 25 bucks an ounce, isn't it? And gold's at like... Here, let me look it up on my phone right now. Hold on. I got a little uh, thing here. Yeah, silver's at 24.97 an ounce. And gold's at 2233 an ounce. Record high for gold, people. Not for silver, though. All right. Um, I think I'm about done streaming for the day. I got about a half hour until the Illinois basketball game comes on. Um, I think with what we've done here, we've showed off a bunch of stuff. I, I, I'm guessing I don't have any 1961s in here. I'll breathe through them at some point in the next few days just to clear off my desk here. I'm not going to put these back away as is. 
or I guess I could just sell these as is as mystery rolls. I never opened it, but I got, I got to go through it just to make sure the guy I bought them from didn't stuff some regular modern dimes in. I, I don't think he would. He's I've bought stuff from him before, and um, but I can't sell this to Gringo right now, saying, "Oh yeah, it's a roll of BU dimes," without knowing for sure that it's a roll of BU one tenth. You know, I, I just I just won't do that because if Gringo gets it and says, oh, Kittle, there was just a bunch of circulated Roosevelt's in there. Then, then, I'm, then, I'm, then I'm in a pickle. Not a party pickle, either. Then I'm in a pickle. Like, did is Gringo screwing me over? Did the guy who mailed them to me screw, him, screw me over? Did Gringo just get confused with something? Did I screw up and send him? The, I don't know. I'm in a pickle, then, you know? And it's not a party pickle, so I gotta at least look. And it's not just so I can cherry pick some amazing thing out of there. No, it's just I don't sell things that I don't know what I'm selling. Usually. Mostly. Live stream watching the game? Um, Onabushu, I would have to maybe do that over on the gaming channel because there'd be a, probably some curse words involved from time to time. Because uh, Illinois is playing number one team. We're ranked number, we were seeded three, but we're playing one of the number ones and usually that doesn't go well for the number three seed. What? It's March Madness. You never know what's going to happen, right? Got to punch the ticket for the Final Four. Going to happen uh, starting in about a half hour. Um, just do big mill prices. Silver a lot. Gold, like, even more. Or, what, he said, like, wasn't it something else? Like, silver a lot, gold a lot. Yeah, remember? It wasn't just one ticker. Remember big mill? He'd have, like, five tickers at the bottom. It looked like the old days of CNBC. Doing all the different stock market tickers. <laughs> oh, that was nuts. I remember. Good to see you, Ogier. Thanks for hanging out with us. Vern said he sent me an email. Nice. Make sure you guys get in on the monthly free coin giveaway. Um, got a couple days left. In. I have no idea what I'm going to give away in April. No idea. I got to find something to give do for the April giveaway. I have the July giveaway planned, if that makes any sense. Um, I have no idea what we're going to do for April. I'll find something. I guess if you got any ideas, shoot me a message on the Discord or an email and maybe I can make it happen. Um, hmm. I could just give away some of them, uh, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip 25th anniversary of their wedding coins that I showed earlier and just rig it so Alfred wins. That'll solve that problem, but we won't do that. Anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. I got to go get some food and uh, watch my game. I'll be uh, hanging out on the JW Coins and Hobbies Discord after this, probably playing some Pokemon, watching the game. Chuck E. Cheese token for April. I mean, some of those are pretty valuable, you know? I don't know if I can... Swing that, unless we have some sponsors for that one. <laughs> oh, man. We'll figure something out. Anyway, thanks again for watching, everybody. And, uh... Yeah. I'll... I'm aiming... I'll get a video out about these Panama Balboa coins soon with uh, details if anybody wants to buy them. But again... Vern says he's already, like, ready to go. The easy... I, I think what we're going to do is you get one of the tenths and one of the quarters, 20 bucks delivered. You know, eight is 12 bucks for the quarter, 6 bucks for the dime, 2 bucks shipping. If you want uh, 10 of each, it's cheaper. And, like, I think 100... I think, what did I say? 150 bucks instead of the 180 if you bought them individually. 150 bucks if you want 10 of each. And if you want a whole roll of the 10th ounce, or not 10th ounce, 10th Balboas, or a little less than 10th ounce, uh, 250 bucks. I think that was the price, as I said, we're going to do. In pizza we trust. Let's go. Oh, man, pizza sounds good. You know what? Instead of making food, you know what would even be better? I might just order some pizza. That might be even better to watch for the game, right? It's rainy and crappy out today. I'm not, like, going outside at all. I'm not going to go touch grass at all today. That sounds way better, doesn't it? For watching the game? Hmm. 
Yeah. No, I know you sponsor a few Gringo, and we do appreciate it. Actually, everyone with the little icon after their name, our channel members, you have all helped sponsor my monthly free coin giveaway. That's what the channel memberships go for. Uh, not floor pizza. Now, floor pizza is when other people order it for me, and it just shows up at the door unexpected. But um, I haven't heard my doorbell, so that hasn't happened yet. Unless it was one of those DoorDash delivery guys where you leave the instructions. Do not touch my doorbell. Do not knock and, you know, all that stuff like that. And it's just sitting out there cold and probably has some bugs on it by now. I did. It happened to me one time. I live in a condo complex, so there's units and some people get confused and... It was a weekend, and I didn't leave my house at all, you know, like on the Saturday. But then I go to leave, on, or maybe it was on the Sunday, and then I go to leave Monday morning to go do some stuff. And there's a bag of Taco Bell sitting right outside my door and a Baja Blast that looks like it's been sitting there for two days. And I'm like, yeah, that's going right to the trash. I didn't I didn't even want to touch it. Like It, it had been sitting there for like two days, but it was probably still good. No, it wasn't. But no, never... They didn't knock, no doorbell, no nothing. That's why I say that's what some people must leave for instruction. The Green Ghost Special is always a winner. Yeah, that might be the way to do it, you know? Thanks again for watching, everybody. Taco Bell doesn't go... Yeah, it's like, it's got so... It's, it's just preserved, right? Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great rest of your Easter holiday weekend. And, um... I guess we'll be in touch, and uh, if you're interested in any of these Panamanian one-tenth and one-quarter Balboas that we got here, we'll be in touch. Otherwise, wait for a video to come out in, I'd say, the next week or two, hopefully. That's my plan. If not, we'll see you in about another 18 months, right, for <laughs> the Panama Silver Horde Revisited again. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks again for all the support. Get in that free coin giveaway. There's always, always a giveaway. Always. On Michael Kittle Rare Coins. Bye. Go Illini.